Hello and welcome to our worship service of online worship for Sunday the 20th of September 2020. We're starting a new series on Jonah today and our theme today is You Can't Run Away From God. As you can see, I'm recording this from inside St Andrews and I hope you enjoy seeing the inside of St Andrews. If you're watching this at 7 o'clock on Sunday evening, I hope there'll be a watch party going on on Facebook. So if you're watching it on Facebook on Sunday at 7 p.m., do uh, see if you can find that watch party and join it. But you are very welcome whether you're watching it on Facebook or on YouTube at 7 p.m. on Sunday or later. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Our CCLI license number is 905881. And I'm very grateful to Ros who has recorded the music for this service for us. The Lord of glory be with you. The Lord bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. For our first hymn, I've chosen Let All the World in Every Corner Sing. I chose this because Jonah was sent to Nineveh, different part of the world, different country, and just reminds us that God's purpose is always to bring all people to him. Wherever you are, whoever you are, you're invited, you're welcome to join God's kingdom. The Prayer of Preparation Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the summary of the law. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. So we turn to our time of confession. The word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All is open 
and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we have to give account. We confess our sins in penitence and faith. So there will be a moment of silence for reflection and then the words for the confession will be on the screen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's now say the Gloria together. The words will be on the screen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Lord Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that, always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jonah chapter 1 The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amateur. Go to this great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarish to flee from the Lord. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the sea ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own god, and they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck, where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call on your god. Maybe he will take notice of us, and we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. So they asked him, Tell us, who is responsible for making all this trouble for us? What do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? 
He answered, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. This terrified them, and they asked, What have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord, because he had already told them so. The sea was getting rougher and rougher, so they asked him, What should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried to the Lord, O Lord, please do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man, for you, our Lord, have done as you pleased. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our next song is From the Sun's Rising to the Sun's Setting. The name of the Lord shall be great in the earth. And it reminds us that whatever the time of day, morning or evening, wherever we go, we are in God's presence. We can't run away from God. And we are to be praising God. From the sun's rising until the sun's setting.
loving God, as we come to your word, we ask that you'll speak to us once more through the Holy Spirit. Make us willing to listen and to obey. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. It's amazing what you still discover new about your best friends years after being best friends. I discovered at my best friend's 50th birthday party that she'd announced one day, I'm leaving home and I'm only taking Teddy and Jesus with me. It must be quite common, I suppose, for children and young people to announce that they're running away, leaving home. It's another thing altogether, however, for a grown-up prophet of God to announce that he's going to run away from God. That seems completely extraordinary. Why would a prophet of God, someone who knows God well, and is entrusted to speak on his behalf, deliberately run away from God. But that is what Jonah sets out to do. It says so in verse three. God asks Jonah to go to Nineveh and preach there. And Jonah deliberately heads off in a different direction to Tarshish. We don't actually discover why Jonah did this until chapter four, where Jonah tells us that he didn't want to preach repentance to Nineveh because he thought that the people might repent and God might forgive them. We'll look at that in more detail in a later week. But just as an aside, it's quite an extraordinary thing for a prophet to be saying. Jonah clearly knows God well and knows God's character. And Jonah doesn't want God to be merciful and loving towards the people of Nineveh. Possibly because Jonah thinks of them as foreigners who deserve to be punished by God. We'll see in chapter 4 that Jonah does end up doing what God has asked him to do and that the people of Nineveh do repent. The conclusion of the whole book is that Jonah discovers that you can't run away from God's purposes. You can't run away from God's purpose, which is to turn people to himself and bring forgiveness and healing and blessing. But that's chapter four. Today, in chapter one, we notice Jonah learning that you can't run away from God's presence. As I said, it specifically says in verse four that that's what Jonah's trying to do. And Jonah discovers that you can't do it. You can't run away from God's presence. Do we sometimes try to run away from God's presence? It's quite easy for us to try to do if we choose to stop coming to services and church activities. We can also try to run away from God by distracting ourselves with busyness at work or our caring responsibilities or our music or our games. We might not try physically running away as Jonah did, but we too can try to run away from God's presence. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work partly because we make ourselves miserable and we also drag other people into our misery as Jonah did by endangering the lives of all the other sailors. But more importantly, it doesn't work because God doesn't give up on us. You can't run away from God's presence because ultimately God is not going to give up on you. And that is a gift and a blessing of God, much as it may not feel like it at the time. 
If you can't run away from God's presence, neither can you run away from God's power. You'll find that in verses 4 to 10. Jonah gets on the ship to Tarshish and has completely fallen asleep. He's probably exhausted from the mental and physical effort of running away from God. And now that he's sailing in the opposite direction, he probably thinks he's achieved his aim and so relaxes and falls asleep. How wrong Jonah is. For God causes a big storm to arise, which puts the ship in peril. The sailors have thrown the cargo overboard and tried everything they could and were now on their last hope. As it says in verse 5, they were all crying to their own gods. They tried everything they could, and now they were at the mercy of the gods. It's interesting that then, as now, sailors seem to be an international bunch, as they all seem to have different gods. Jonah discovers that wherever you run, and however deeply asleep you are, you can't run away from God's power. On one hand, God's power can be terrifying, as the sailors saw in the power of the storm. And on the other hand, thinking of God's power can be a comfort to us when we realise that if God has planned something, Nothing can stop him. God has absolutely all the power he needs to do what he pleases. Whether that's causing governments to rise and fall, whether that's bringing healing to our bodies, or bringing peace to our anxious minds, or whether it's helping us get appointments and opportunities we need. You can't run away from God's power. In verses 11 and 12, Jonah confesses to the sailors that he's running away from God and suggests that they throw him into the sea. The sailors are very reluctant to do this, as they know it'll mean certain death for Jonah. But eventually, they decide they have no choice and throw Jonah overboard. This is where Jonah makes his third discovery. For he does not drown and sink to the bottom of the sea, but is swallowed by a large fish. Jonah discovers that you can't run away from God's provision. It says in verse 17, God provided the large fish. Even at the bottom of the sea, God provides for Jonah by providing a fish to protect him from death. That's a comfort to us, isn't it? Jonah has put himself completely in the wrong, and yet God is prepared to act to protect him. Now, I'm not encouraging you to presume on God's grace and deliberately run away or put yourself in dangerous places. But if you do find yourself in such a situation, be reassured that you can't run away from God's provision. And I know that some of you do find yourself in such situations perhaps with family members caught up in using drugs or with having to flee an abusive relationship or with no money because the system has let you down. If you know God and belong to him, you can't run away from his provision. When you hit that rock bottom place where everything is dark and miserable and horrible, and you're sinking fast. Cry out to God, just as Jonah did. 
God is faithful. God will come and find you. Jonah discovered that try as you might, you can't run away from God's provision. You can't run away from God's power. You can't run away from God's presence. Those are blessings of God. They are blessings that, in the grace of God, reach us at precisely the points we don't want them, but we need them. They are blessings we may trust and rely on because God is faithful. You can't run away from God's provision. You can't run away from God's power. You can't run away from God's presence. In our next song, I've picked up the theme of God's provision. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. We started by singing of how God's presence was all over the world and God wanted people from all over the world to worship him. And as we now affirm our faith by saying the Nicene Creed, let's remember that God has achieved that and God is continuing to achieve the formation of a worldwide community, his church, to all share this faith, affirm this faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for sending your Holy Spirit to be our helper in these difficult times. We pray for unity and love in our churches, our homes, our communities and our world. The war and distrust will be put aside for the common good. Help us as your people to live our lives to the glory of your name, that all may come to love you and worship you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray you, to you, Father, to hasten the work to find a vaccine for the coronavirus and an effective cure that lives will be saved and all will be free from the fear that surrounds us. We pray for all who are sick in body and mind and ask that in your mercy you will give healing and a renewal of life and hope. Bless those that work in hospitals and care homes and those working to find the cures for many illness that plague us. Father, give us comfort and hope. We come close to you for strength and give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all the leaders of your world that they will rule with honesty and make the needs of the people priority when making laws so that all may live with respect and hope. We ask that there will be an equitable, just solution to the trade talks between Britain and Europe so that we can still remain a part of a united Europe and continue the work with them for the good of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are fleeing their own country because of war or tyranny in the search of a better life. Lord, care for them and help them. May all nations seek to support them, that they will be able to live in peace and hope. We pray for the many thousands now out of work because of the financial effects of the virus. Please, Father, find them work. Help all the charities who work with the homeless, that they will be heard and leaders in government will support them to find homes. Father, this is a world often torn apart by greed, where the vulnerable in society are forgotten. Help us all to play our part, to bring about changes in our world, that we will care for the environment, love our neighbours, near and far, and show all we love for the glory of your name. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so in faith and trust we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So we turn to our greeting of priests. God will speak peace to his people, to those who turn to him in their hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of God's peace. So in physical church, we've been doing this by using British Sign Language. Peace be with you. If you're with somebody at home, please give them the greeting of peace. If you're watching this on the watch party, do use the opportunity to type up in the chat box, peace be with you, and I'll give you a minute or two to do that. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Our closing prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our notices are as follows. This week um, on the St John's Facebook page, every weekday morning at 9.30, we have morning prayer live. Please do join us. Our services next Sunday will be 9.30 at St Andrews and 11 o'clock at St John's for physical church and 7 p.m. online St John's Facebook page for virtual church. Our new discovery group, which is a Bible study home group, meets on Zoom at half past seven on Monday. The choir meets at half past five on Wednesday on Zoom and the games evening meets at seven o'clock on Friday on Zoom. If you'd like to come to any of those, please just ask me for an invitation and we will invite you to Zoom. Our annual meeting is going to be on the 18th of October at midday. And in preparation for that, we're currently revising the electoral roll. So, You'd either like to check the electoral roll or you think you're not on it and you'd like to be on it. Uh, please let me know or please let Julie in the office know. Our final hymn is a lively one. Teach me to dance. I chose this, I think, because it felt like and um, what Jonah needed was to get caught up in God's heartbeat and learn to rejoice and learn to go with the flow of the Holy Spirit, with what God's heart was and what God's wanting to do. So us, it's a prayer to ask for the same spirit for us. Teach me to dance.
Our closing blessing. Hear the teaching of Jesus. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Go now to do God's will. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.